This is the review video you didn't know you were waiting for. It's over the Unihertz Atom phone. <laughs> it's so small. It's like straight out of Zoolander. Look at this thing. It's tiny. It's like puts like the old Nokia from the late 90s that I have such fond memories of, or maybe it was early 2000s. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll link that phone up here, but this thing is tiny. Oh my God. Oh, I love it. Um, so needless to say, I was sent this by the Unihertz company to review because I didn't know it existed. It was a Kickstarter project that raised like a million dollars or something crazy. And it's really, really kind of a cool idea. So let's review this phone and see what happens with it. So first things first, let's go ahead and dispel some things here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the stat sheet up here as I read it off. This is an octa-core 2 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, uh, 2,000 milliamp battery, pretty standard, display size of 2.4 inches, <laughs> a camera of 16 megapixels uh, as far as the back, uh, front is 8 megapixels, and it's running Android 8.1 Oreo, so actually a, a rev or two behind uh, most phones, at least flagship phones. And then it is IP68, water and dust resistant, so it's pretty rugged. You don't need a case or anything for it. Um, I'm not going to spike it on the ground or anything crazy, but it's rather shock resistant, so you should be okay there. So why this phone? Why would you even consider this phone? And really, it boils down to two reasons that I can see right off the bat. It's 250 bucks, I believe, retail uh, at the making of this video. Also, it is rather rugged and small. So, like, let's say you work out a whole bunch or you're in the construction industry and you're constantly breaking a phone. This is a really, really small phone. So, you fit a lot of places and it has some neat features. So, let's go ahead and go over those features. Okay, what we have in the box is a simple USB-C cable right here. Um, that's pretty nice. We have a SIM card opener, a little thing that ties off to the top of the phone that we can actually dangle on our, our wrist, not our neck actually, that's not a lanyard, but actually just goes on the wrist it looks like. And then we have a power adapter. This right here is a five volt, 1500 milliamp power adapter. Uh, this is actually 1.5 amps, and it's a little bit less than your average adapter, but to be expected with this phone right here. So the phone itself, if we look at here, we have a USB-C, a push-to-talk, and a power button on this side. Note the push-to-talk is programmable, so if you, you do have problems, I personally don't use push-to-talk. I think that's mainly like for construction workers and things. But uh, I found I just reprogrammed it to camera and other things. So that's kind of a neat feature. Right here on the end is our 3.5 millimeter that we can easily put our headphones and stuff on. So that's, that's kind of awesome. Uh, volume up and down, our SIM card tray. Please note it does accept CDMA and GSM. And on the bottom section, nothing much. That's actually the little loop to put our wrist strap on. So getting into the phone itself, let's go ahead and hit the power button here and see what we get. So I'm going to crank down my ISO so we should have a nice, crisp, beautiful screen. All right, so now we're locked onto the screen. This is our home screen here. Uh, overall, it is very functional, very fast. I'm able to do pretty much whatever I want on here so I can look up maps and it pulls up. But again, this is really tiny. That's kind of uh, amazing in its own right as far as the actual uh, phone itself. It, it is very functional. Like I'm looking at this through my camera and I'm able to actually hit all the things I need to hit. So let's pull up dark mode. Ooh, that's pretty. 
and see if I can type everything in. So let's try and actually type a note on this. Uh, this is really small. Look, my thumb takes up the entire keyboard. So it's kind of surprising this kind of works. Uh, I would try and use voice chat, but for this, let's just try and hit it from the keyboard. Subscribe and, oh no, back. And now amp and like subscribe and like so yes you can do simple text messages i would probably lean heavily on the actual voice commands so let's try a voice command and see if it picks up everything subscribe and like so it did pick it up i am currently about two feet away from this phone which is quite impressive that it picks up my voice and is able to transcribe this at this distance. So that's really nice. So I, if you're texting, probably using the voice would be the ideal thing, unless you're just saying like, okay, or yes, because that right there is kind of insane. And as far as the Play Store, can you play games and stuff? Sure, you can. However, would I recommend it? Absolutely not. This is a tiny screen and controls of any game would be very difficult. But you can, rest assured, respond to text messages, look up the occasional location that you need, but obviously not meant for heavy graphic user interface usage. It's just meant for a lot of the other stuff. So let's try one last thing. and. Uh, See if it'll play a video. Like I have my videos uh, pulled up here uh, by default. So we'll go that and go full screen with it. Pretty darn slick. I mean, the fact this thing actually even plays this is, is kind of surprising to me. Um, but it, it does and that works. As far as the internal speakers, they kind of suck. So let's... Uh, and then ratchet it back clean up some of the privacy issues with Windows 10, and then also just make it a lot better with some basic system tools. There we have it. That's that's the basic functionality of this little phone. I mean, other things to note, this is Oreo, uh, which is 8.1, so not the latest and greatest as far as Android goes. But at the same time, if you're buying a little dinky phone like this, it's not going to be the latest and greatest, uh, and that's probably not what you're looking for anyways. However, this is an unlocked bootloader. If I pull up settings here, I can actually uh, look and see about the system itself. And I've already tried to do an update and it says it's already up to date, which cool about the phone itself. Let's see if it shows anything else. Um, we have wireless update, status, Android version, all the, all the normal stuff. Uh, let's see into boom we are now a developer so that's kind of awesome that we're able to go into development mode pretty darn easily this does do bluetooth casting nfc and also uh usb hookups as well so that's kind of neat uh networking it does wi-fi and it does do hotspot and USB tethering as well. I need an actual SIM card in here to do the Wi-Fi hotspot, which I don't have. And the display, as far as what I see on the display, uh, it's kind of meh, but it's a 2.5 inch screen. You don't buy this for the graphics. So the display itself is uh, a little lackluster. Overall, would I recommend this little phone? And the answer is, it depends. For some people, this would actually fit. But for those that actually are on their phone, using apps and stuff all the time, constantly reading the news, this is not for you. So that was the Atom phone. What are my initial impressions of this phone? Will I use this phone? And the answer is, yeah, if I'm working out or going for a run or something, I'd much rather take this phone. Or let's say I'm going into like a dangerous environment or maybe the swimming pool, I might take this phone as well. Now, I'm not going to swim and take photos or anything crazy underwater with this phone as it's only resistant, not proof. But at the same time, if it dropped in the water, I would be like, oh, no big deal. And you snack it, snatch it right up, it'd be fine. Um, or maybe if you're going in the lake or something like that, you know, these types of scenarios 
pop up and you don't want your nice iPhone or Android phone or, uh, you know, six, $700 phone, whichever floats your boat, you don't want to take that expensive phone with you. This phone would definitely be perfect for it. You can also kind of take this and switch out a lot of the network carriers. So it supports both GSM and CDMA. So whether you're on AT&T or Verizon here in the States, you could easily swap these out at, as needed, which is, is pretty nice feature um, where you can, pretty much put this on anything. Now, I'm going to probably take this a little bit further and hack around with it and probably do some side loading of things. And I, I don't know, with that unlocked bootloader, I pretty much have the world at my fingertips. However, I don't know how much third party support I get if there's custom ROMs and these types of things to really dive deep into it. But needless to say, it's a neat idea and it fills a really small niche. So if you're thinking you're looking for something like this and you want to use it and you're not sitting there constantly on YouTube or browsing the internet on this, you know, obviously don't, don't do that for, for this phone. But if you want it just to do the basic things a phone should do, this is a great phone for that. And if it fills that niche and you're in one of those hardened or going to a very uh, rugged environment, you can totally take this phone in those environments and it's probably going to come through just fine. If not, at least you didn't spend a thousand dollars to replace your awesome phone that you left at home and you just got this $250 unlocked phone that you can do pretty much anything with. But with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I'm curious on this one. It was just kind of an oddball thing that popped up in my email. I was like, I really want to see this phone. It can't be that small. And I started using it and I was like, it's actually that small and it's actually functional. So I was kind of surprised by uh, the size and just the overall experience with it. It's it's definitely an obscure uh, thing that will stick out. If you pull that out of a party, you're probably going to get some laughs, but at the same time, a lot of people will be a little bit intrigued as well. I know I was. But with all that said, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you on the next one.